This is just a short video on proper end coil installation. If you're putting one of these on a train furnace, you certainly don't want to install it all the way down on the furnace because the 90 percenters, I think it's just the 90s, have that baffle. And as you can see, our end coil has that little airflow on that side. So you got to make sure your rails are certainly not sticking out any further than the opening in that in that end coil there or you're gonna have a freeze up situation for sure uh, and obviously pitched to the left to the drain and forward so yeah definitely don't want to mount these down right on top of a train furnace. American Standard, same thing. But that's what, you, and I've got lucky on this one. Most plenums are only 20 inches deep, but if you got a 20 inch deep plenum, you want to make sure this manifold right here is covered with foam tape. You don't want that rubbing on the front of the sheet metal here. So you know just keep an eye on that if you're anywhere near the front you're going to want to protect this when you put your cover on or whatever you're doing i just made a cover on this one but yeah that's your proper end coil installation right there we got a humidifier out the back so i was keeping an eye on that guy got that centered on my on my area between the coils there <clears throat> Yeah, what's that air exchanger up there maybe? I don't know. Yeah. There you go. Keep an eye on that small opening. That's the main point of this video. You want to keep your rails from blocking that. Whatever you're holding the coil up with and don't mount it down tight on top of a train or American Standard or any furnace that's got baffles like that for for that point in fact they always recommend to raise these these end coils up a bit if you can sometimes you can't and you just get across your fingers and pray